As pretty much everyone knows, I like to collect on the strange and weird side of train-related stuff. Not every little train I own is worthy of its own video, because it may have been a one-off, it's not that interesting, or I simply don't own all the pieces and don't intend to. This video pretty much fills in that gap of the little trains I have received over the past couple years that I do not plan on dedicating entire videos to. Starting off with this, I'm sure you've seen trains like this before, and this was produced by Midge Toy, a manufacturer specializing in low detail and low cost toy vehicles. The company would go on to produce quite a few trains with New York Central and Amtrak branded packaging on two of their sets. This one here is the 440 locomotive from the train that won the West set. I can't confirm that this one is based on any particular locomotive, nor do I care to do the research. The toy is almost all metal, with the wheels being plastic to prevent damage to floors. The 440 is unique among the Midge Toy train lineup, as the only piece in the entire lineup to have a separate piece in the casting. The headlight and stack are a completely different casting to the boiler. Other than that, all the details are molded into the body, including the wheels. The real wheels are hidden under this side skirt here. The bodies are hollow, a pretty common trait of all Midge Toy products. Cars couple together with a simple pin and hook system, and it does a good job holding the cars together, although I do not see them staying together very well on inclines. These trains are super common and easy to collect, so if you're interested, I'd say the $15 for a full set in box is worth it. Here's one you've probably seen before. Now, if you haven't, look around your house. You'll probably find one hiding under a couch or in a drawer. This was produced by Flesher, Barnhart, and White for Model Railroad Company Atlas. I believe these were mainly sold via Shell gas stations in 1995. This extra tank car a loving friend gave me actually has the original promotion and info card included. This set included an 080 steam locomotive, a tender, tank car, and a caboose. The main body of each car is made of die cast metal with a plastic frame and wheels. All details are molded into the one piece body with the trucks on the cars being able to rotate as this set had a mail-in promotion to receive a circle of track. Speaking of track, this set is compatible with HO scale track, although it does not roll well and the locomotive occasionally clips on switches. Cars couple together with a simple loop and pin system and they really do not like inclines. The set would receive a re-release with the new flat cars, a NASCAR themed set in 1997 under the Ravel name. Although that appears to be the last time this set has ever been seen. These are easy to find and a decent toy, so if it's your thing, go for it, I guess. Here's our token F tier train here. I may reclassify this one in the future because there's actually quite a lot to these little trains. But for now, let's talk about these two on their own. This is sold as the Carrera Tempo Diesel Freight Set. Carrera is a company most renowned for their slot cars and other car related toys. So it's not surprising that they sold a train at some point. This seems to be becoming a theme for this channel. So this set was not originally produced by Carrera. It was manufactured originally by a company called Technic 9, and I cannot find much on what or who they were. Let's get the elephant out of the room first. It's very long. I'm not sure exactly why it's this long, as the single gold AAA battery doesn't take up anywhere near as much space as I'd imagine. It's powered by a single driven axle that looks completely ridiculous, and I couldn't actually get this one to work in time for the video, but it's been called pathetic, by more than one person I've talked to. So that should give us an idea of how well it runs. Interestingly, the cars and locomotive have metal wheels. The couplers are a simple hook and loop system and don't feel completely terrible. It supposedly fits on engaged track, but I don't own any, so I cannot confirm. There's a whole line of these little parasites with several different liveries, accessories, and other train types, especially under the Technic 9 name, with most being just as ugly and all sharing the same terrible drive. Next up is a familiar name, Lionel. Yes, that Lionel. In 1999, Lionel offered a short-lived line of trains they dubbed their Classic Series. The lineup would go on to offer six iconic Lionel locomotives in both 1120 or TT scale starting in 1998 and 1160 or N scale starting in 1999. The locomotives offered included the New York Central Hudson, the Norfolk and Western J class, Santa Fe F3, a Chessie GP9, Pennsylvania GG1, and the Western Atlantic Railroad General, which I have in both scales here. We'll start with the N scale one here first. The locomotive and tender are permanently coupled, unlike the other steam locomotives in this range and scale. The detailing is incredibly simplistic, with the entire body being one metal piece with plastic wheels underneath dummy wheels and rods. These N scale ones came in little blister packs, much like a Hot Wheels car. 
The TT versions of these are much more interesting, as Lionel took a completely different approach with them and intended for these to be a collector's items with much finer details and a collector's tin complete with a card about the facts of the respective locomotive. The locomotive boasts very fine handrails, with the main boiler and cab being metal, while the added on details are plastic. The wheels turn, the trucks pivot, and the locomotive tender can be coupled and uncoupled. Speaking of couplers, the tender is a knuckle coupler on the back that will actually couple to other units. The TT line would see a re-release in 1999 with six new liveries for the F3 and GP9 respectively. I have the GP9 from this re-release and it boasts similar details and features to the general. There were also a couple Lionel Century Club releases of the TT line which added the 726 Berkshire and 671 Turbine along with some repaints as exclusives. The TT ones are nice pieces, although some of them can fetch a pretty penny online. The N scale ones are much cheaper, although personally, I wouldn't pursue collecting those. Here's the one I'm sure that got you interested. This classy box was part of a lineup of tin toys offered by Restoration Hardware, a luxury home furnishing company. I can't tell you a date on this, although I can assume it was either a 90s or early 2000s product. Supposedly, this line was actually manufactured by another company, and I've read somewhere online it was shilling. The New York Central Hudson is the only train that was ever offered in this line. Out of the box, it's comprised almost entirely of sheet metal, with bent tabs being inserted into small holes to hold the whole structure together. The locomotive couples to the tender with a small pin, and it makes for a great shelf piece. Oh yeah, about that. While well, the box says it's a toy, it also says it's not for children and intended for adult collectors only. It doesn't roll super well and doesn't feel super sturdy in the hands. It's, however, a super easy find, and if a shelf piece interests you, I'd say it's definitely worth a gander. The last one I have here is also the most modern. This came out in 2024 and is part of a Fast and Furious playset. Yes, you heard that right. One of the most iconic scenes from the first Fast film was a drag race ending with a jump in front of a train. Jada Toys decided in 2024 to release a set based off the scene, including a little train. This set was part of Jada's Nano line, a small lineup of cars based on movie franchises. This set has to be assembled, and it simply just snaps together. Well, we're obviously going to focus on the train here. The locomotive in the film is an ex Rio Grande EMD GP40. The train here is actually fairly faithful to the original, at least looking at it from the back. I say from the back because the front is just completely flat. I have no idea why it is like this, especially considering the back is angled. Other than that, it's a pretty passable GP40. It's coupled up to a center beam car, which is also reasonably well detailed. There's not much to write about here though, although the crates on board do not detach. They couple together with a small pin and hook, and the trucks on the bottom do not rotate. This train is also meant to be a display piece much like the previous Hudson, so the track it comes with is not meant for play. The train pretty much rides along on the ties, and the whole thing assembled is just not quite oriented. The whole thing is very easy to assemble, with everything just clicking together. It's still on shelves, so if you're after the train though, I wouldn't really recommend this.